Live from Muse Expo, we had a chance to catch up with David Renzer, veteran music publisher. David has been involved with many, many music publishing companies, including Zamba Music, and he was the president and chairman of Universal Music Publishing for many, many years. And we had a chance to catch up with him and talk about the current state of music publishing. David, thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate it. Sure. David. The role of the music publisher today seems to have expanded from what it once traditionally was. You have a lot of publishers today like Cobalt offering a lot of additional services, label services, marketing services for artists that they traditionally didn't offer before. Is this what you see as the future of the independent music publisher? Hmm. Well, I think that, um, I think, you know, you've got within You've, you've got within the world of publishing, you've got the major publishers, which, you know, I think are, you know, the challenge there is just really dealing with the significant amount of copyrights they have, the significant amount of writers and the roster that they have, and really providing a global service to them, which, you know, which they do well, um, but that really is demanding, you know, when you've got um, millions of copyrights to try and um, manage, exploit and rosters that are as large as they are, especially you know, some of the majors that have merged, um, you know, that, that becomes a real challenge. And I think that the focus there has to be and should be on what are we doing to really work with those rosters and to manage that and collect and administer those rights on a global basis. Um, so I think it's challenging within uh, that scenario to effectively launch other service areas um, although you try and be supportive and you try and augment, you know, whatever you can in terms of what the talent needs, and that might be, hey, they need a great manager, so you're going to, you know, connect them with uh, maybe a relationship you have, or uh, maybe they're in between lawyers and they might say, hey, who do you recommend? Um, or they might have lost a, a record deal, in which case, you know, you, you know there, there could be a conversation, and, you know, this, this did come up, uh, you know, in my, in my past where, okay, you know, Labels have, you know, the major labels have, rosters have shrunk. Suddenly you've got artists and some genres have been hit, you know, very hard by it. You know, the jazz genre, suddenly we had, we published a lot of jazz clients and suddenly none of them, they had lost all their record labels. What do they go? What do they do? What are their options? And, um, and you know, you can't necessarily provide every service for them, but you're going to suggest and refer them to, hey, you can, you know, you can do it yourself and just get distributed. You can, you know, whether it's, you know, CD Baby or, you know, whatever the, the various options are that, and there's so many. And that's, I think, one of the exciting things is, you know, there are many DIY options now for, for artists. Um, and I think, I think as you get below the major publishers and get into the sort of the, the, the maybe the more, you know, the medium independent sized or the smaller independents, you know, there I think you might see wearing more hats, you know, um, pop possible for a publisher uh, to also be a digital, you know, to have their own label, to be, uh, you know, to be in the position where they can effectively function as a distributor of masters, um, certainly digitally and potentially even on the physical side. Um, and so I think that um, probably within the smaller companies, I think you'll see maybe providing more of those, actually providing those services. Um, and I think, um, you know, Cobalt is a different kind of model, I think, with, a f with an emphasis on administration. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and then they've set up other services, not, not only to service the publishing roster, but just really as business, to expand their businesses, you know, label services and, um, and collection of neighboring rights, for instance. Um, they actually acquired other businesses that were doing that, and so they're set up to provide those other services. And I think it's an interesting model. Um, you know, I think that the administration uh, is is right for certain clients, uh, you know, admi administration deal only. And I think that the real question that you know that talent and their representatives, uh, you know, always have to look at is, okay, what what do I really need? If I'm a producer, if I'm a songwriter, if I'm a band, what do I really need? Where am I at in my career? And what you know, what's important to me? Is it kind of do I want just someone to collect my money for me? And you know, globally, uh, do I need more? serve of service to, you know is it really important to me to get my music into film and television you know and who can really do those things for me the best who's best positioned to do those things and i think there's a number of factors you look at 
when you're weighing all those things, you know, the size of the company, the, the personal relationships, the, um, the effectiveness of the company, uh, the global uh, infrastructure that, that a company has. A lot of things to, to think about and consider when you're, um, you know, when you're looking at your various options. David, with the volume of companies that have come into the market that you know, have copyrights, new publishing companies, new houses, new libraries, so many new companies over the last five or six years, has this volume affected the price that you can charge for synchronization for film and TV? Yeah, that's, that's a good question. And, and I think um, you're hitting on a, on a, on a sensitive point because um, you know, with the decline in physical sales especially, um, artists and publishers and record labels um, have all recognized the importance, and in some cases just out of sheer necessity, have recognized the importance of, of the synchronization market and that getting your music placed in film and TV. Um, in some cases, that's where artists are making the bulk of their money. Um, you can have an artist who releases an unsuccessful record, maybe the record doesn't sell, but their music's very you know, friendly for commercials or to film and TV, and they can make, you know, recoup the costs uh, and, you know, and become a profitable uh, act for a label just based off of uh, the synchronization deals. Um, but the downside of everyone focusing on synchronization has become um, you know, a flood of, of music to that market. Um, and I think that for the well-known hit songs, uh, for those evergreen titles or the big hit songs, those can still command um, a significant sync fee. Um, but really, once you get beneath that, that the, the competition for placements has meant, I think, that there is pressure on pricing. So the, 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 the typical sync deals, um, there is just a, a lot of competition for it. And in some cases, I mean, I was, I was a little shocked to hear a uh, you know, a head of music at, um, I believe it was a head of music at one of the film studios say, um, you know, that they were surprised that, um, that they still expected art, that artists were expecting to get paid because they felt like we're providing so much promotional value uh, that artists should be paying us <laughs> for, for placing their material. So, you know, so you've got, yeah, you've got, um, you know, kind of everyone's hustling. Um, I think there is a certain base level, I think, that, you know, um, music um, syncs should be, you know, can be getting in the marketplace. I think there's some, uh, there's some concern, you know, because in some cases people are willing to license their music for no sync fee and just hoping to get um, performance income, you know, just, uh, you know, and get compensated that way. Um, I think that's, a real problem, and I think that it uh, puts, you know, it, I think it devalues uh, music uh, to do that. So, uh, so my message to creative people is, you, what you've created has value. Don't give it away. Um, you know, the message I think to music users is, music adds tremendous, uh, you know, adds tremendously to your content, whatever it is, whether it's a film or TV show or a commercial, uh, and people know that. People know the power of music. Um, and especially, you know, if it's a well-known song, you know, the evocative power of that. Um, so I think we all, as an industry, should do, be doing everything we can to maintain the value uh, of music in, in the sync market.